When you think of the Ashmolean, what do you think of? Imposing statues? Priceless paintings? Well, my favourite object is a little more down-to-earth. It's a wonderful carriage clock designed with all the information that a tourist or a traveller might need. It caught my attention because as well as telling the time, this is an astronomical instrument. Astronomers have always been concerned with the passing of time and the sky is a reliable clock. The phases of the moon are shown here and you can imagine why a 19th century traveller might want to know about them. But more curiously, there are two dials which say something about the sun. In fact, they tell you whether the clock on any given day is running ahead or behind the sun. That sounds a bit odd, but the sun doesn't keep a steady pace across the sky throughout the year. It would do if the Earth's orbit was a perfect circle and if its axis wasn't tilted, but neither of those things are true. We travel in an ellipse around the sun, on a planet with an axis tilted at 23 and a half degrees. That's why we have seasons. And so sometimes the sun runs ahead of a perfect clock and sometimes behind. The mean in Greenwich Mean Time is an average, the time an average sun would give you. If you use a sundial to measure time, then you have to worry about this effect. In fact, most sundials will have engraved on or near them a graph that shows when the sun is running fast compared to clock time and when it's running slow, something called, rather grandly, the equation of time. But that's for sundials, for playing with sticks and shadows. It seemed very strange to me that a nice, modern-looking clock like this one, capable of showing a traveller the date as well as the time, would bother showing the difference to solar time at all. It seems redundant, and it's expensive. But then I realised I was looking at things backwards. When this clock was made, it was still quite a feat to produce a mechanism which could reliably keep time over weeks and over months, especially if you're travelling, bouncing around inside a carriage. In such circumstances, you need to be able to reset the clock, and you can do that using the sun if you know the difference between clock time and solar time. And so what seemed to be some sort of vestigial relic, a throwback to the days of sundials, is actually an essential part of the clock's intended use. It represents a particular moment of history, when clockmakers have managed to make glorious objects that could reliably tell us the time, but before the concept had been completely abstracted from its astronomical origins. When you look at your watch today, you no longer need to think about the movements of the Earth and the Sun. But this clock, for me, is a reminder that maybe you should.